Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Hope everybody's doing good. You know, this is going to be a very telling week for the Dallas Cowboys. We have internal uh, interviews for the de defensive coordinator position uh, in Dallas. They'll be checking, I'm assuming, Al Harris, and we'll see who else um, they interview as far as defensive coordinator positions within the Dallas Cowboys, uh, replacing Dan Quinn. We know Joe Witt is going to be going to the Commanders as well, so that's one name that's not in there. And then tomorrow, and I believe Wednesday, will be Mike Zimmer and Ron Rivera, two veteran coaches. And I believe that the Cowboys will probably go with somebody who has more experience than Al Harris, although I think Al Harris deserves a chance because Al Harris is more of the mold of young uh coaches that seem to be able to motivate the players and you can look across the board where the bill belichick's the pete carroll's are more out and you now have the antonio um uh, pierces and um so on T coaches that are closer to the players aides that can be in your face motivators but not in your face to denigrate you but to fire you up so we'll see where that all goes that'll be telling but what most people don't realize is, as we sit here, and I believe this is the 4th of February, I may be wrong on that, um, it seems like all the days just go into each other, um, we are basically five weeks and two days away from legal tampering in the NFL. March 11th is when you can start making contact with free agents to uh, sign on your roster. Now, we've heard that the Cowboys are saying they're going all in. Well, we'll see if that is the case. In the meantime, <clears throat> they need to start figuring out which ones of the free agents that they have that they want to hold on to. And we do have 16, which is actually down from, I believe we had 26 last year. Now, some of them, it's not, uh, it's a no brainer on deciding on whether or not they should come back. Other ones you definitely want to think about bringing back. Some of them are kind of on the borderline. So I want to go through the list this morning of the 16 that we have, at least the top ones and ones that we probably definitely need to be ring back first on the list is tyron smith who has played 13 seasons with the dallas cowboys and he is when when he's played he's one of the best in football this year he got more games in than probably the last three years but i don't know how well he's going to hold up i have a feeling that the cowboys are going to end up bringing him back and giving him another incentive latent contract. I don't necessarily have a problem with that, but they need to be thinking about the succession plan. And right now, the original plan was going to be that Tyler Smith was going to be that succession plan, but he has played so good at left guard that you don't want to move him. You want to go ahead and find yourself your next left tackle. And this is where the Cowboys may use that later round pick on getting a left tackle. Tony Pollard has had five seasons with the Cowboys, and they used a franchise tag on him. Typically, the Cowboys, they end up running running backs into the ground. And if they bring him back, it's going to end up being a short-term deal, and it'll probably be maybe about 4 or $5 million. I don't have a, a gauge on that one. The problem the Cowboys did was, one, he was recovering from injury, and he admitted that he wasn't quite there to start the season, which is typical of the contracts we've signed with guys that are injured. We looked at um, uh, Terrence Steele. He wasn't quite the same coming back this year. Hopefully, it'll be better next year. Uh, Michael Gallup still isn't right. So, we'll see what happens with Tony Pollard. But, you know, running backs, you need them. You need a running game. But they're not making a whole lot of money. And I look for the Cowboys, hopefully, if they bring back Tony Pollard, to add another really solid piece, maybe a Derrick Henry or something like that. I, I'd be excited if they did a Josh Jacobs. But who knows? Stephon Gilmore. Um, Gilmore was only here for one year. He ended up playing really, really well for us. Um, 
had he been teamed up with Diggs the whole season, it would have been great. I hope that they can try and work out a deal that's team friendly to bring him back. I think if Deron Bland gets some more seasoning um, with the team and if you can get Diggs back and he is back to being healthy, then you could have a really good secondary. Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis has been a guy who's been kind of on the chopping block, it seems like, every year, and he spent seven seasons with the Cowboys. A good player, but I think at this point they probably let him go. Dorts Armstrong, who was second on sacks this year, and this is where I was talking yesterday during our live stream when you had Jesse Holly basically saying that, you know, Micah Parsons is selfish because he doesn't want to be, you know, an edge rusher because, of course, that's easy. Because that's easy. Um, he, he's not putting in the time to be a great linebacker. And the reality is, is if you take Micah Parsons off of pass rushing, you don't have a great pass rush. One of the reasons why the other guys did well was because Micah Parsons. And let me equate this to you. Because how many times have we seen shots where Micah Parsons getting doubled and triple teamed? Right? When he gets doubled and triple teamed, understand they're not getting an extra guy or two on the field. It's the same 11 guys. So if one guy is occupying two or three people, that means there's no person for one or two of those other guys, be it an edge rusher, be it a cornerback, whatever. That allows you to put resources elsewhere that aren't being used. And I don't think people get that because a lot of times there'll be games where Mike is not going to get a lot because they're saying, we're not going to allow this guy to destroy us. <clears throat> and that's where the other guys have to feast. <clears throat> Your number two sack getter was Dorrance Armstrong, who, interestingly enough, when we lost Randy Gregory, this is where Stephen Jones said that from a protection standpoint, Dorrance Armstrong is right there with Randy Gregory. In fact, of the matter is, he's actually had better seasons. He's had more sacks the last two seasons, each of those years, than Randy Gregory has had in any one year of his. He's been a good player for the Cowboys, and I think that they may look at trying to bring him back, but he may end up getting uh, you know, the, the Brinks truck backed up, and they may just let him go. J. Ron Curse has been up and down in 23. Um, I'm not sure J. Ron's going to be coming back. Uh, Dante Fowler, um, I could see Dante Fowler going to Washington because, you know, he worked with uh, Dan Quinn when he was in Atlanta, and it seems like there's a relationship there. He's played pretty good for us, but I think that's a guy that, go, that goes. Uh, Jonathan Hankins, who was going to be 33 years old, Inside, you know, a, a one technique guy played good for us for the two years after being released by the Raiders. Um, we tried to basically get his replacement in Mozzie Smith, and for whatever reason, the Cowboys have basically gotten, and, and I don't know if it's his plan or the Cowboys' plan, he's under 300 pounds. For Mozzie Smith, so I don't know if there's a different plan where they're saying we're going to make you, you know, a three technique or something like that, or we want you to be faster. I don't know, but I need some strong guys that are removable forces in the middle. So we'll see. Hankins could be a team friendly deal, not a whole lot of money. Uh, Trent Singh, of course, um, had one season as a long snapper. I believe they bring him back. Igota. One season of the Cowboys coming from the Jets that were offensive line hungry. They let him go, and um, he's had some rough games. Um, part of the problem is he had a hyperextended elbow early on and was thrust into the limelight uh, early. He's not good at tackle. He's better at guard. A guy who I really and truly had a lot of hope for was Navelle Gallimore. When Gallimore trucked Mike Pouncey in that Steelers game a few years ago, you saw the raw power. But after he hyperextended his elbow, he never seemed to be the same, and he seems like he had always been in the doghouse. Um, I believe he's going to be gone as well. I don't think they'll re-sign him. Rico Daddle, another running back that's rookie deal, is expired, and I think he's gone. Tyler Biotish, I think you need to upgrade your setting center. And I'm not sure if he's going to come back. Bell is a player that they think highly of, and I think that they would put Bell in and let Biotish get paid elsewhere. Sean McKinnon, tight end. Um, 
Of course, they they believe in tight ends. When you're having Mike McCarthy's offense, he likes to have three and four different types of right, uh, tight ends on there, and I can see them bringing back because he's not real expensive. And C.J. Godwin, who was injured uh, most of the season and things, was shut down. Um, he'll be 34 years old. Um, probably might not be brought back. Uh, he's getting along in the two. So those are the decisions that the Cowboys have to make on their own. And we've got about five weeks. Now, the Cowboys don't ever seem to have a sense of urgency on anything. They let guys go. We've seen them have premier players go in free agency. Amari Cooper literally was able to talk to Washington about getting a deal where he turned it down and came back and signed with the Cowboys. Um, we know Randy Gregory was able to go out to free agency, and he talked to uh, the Denver Broncos, came back with a deal. The Cowboys decided they want to put more stuff on it, and he goes to Denver, gets cut during the year, and he's on the San Francisco 49er and might get a ring. So for him, I guess this kind of worked out pretty good for him. The big question will be is, what will the Cowboys do? A, are the Cowboys actually all in? Because here's the problem for the Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys may get a fifth and a sixth compensatory pick, but those are later round draft picks. Typically, you can't go ahead and say, well, we got a hole at linebacker. We need a, a stud defensive, interior defensive lineman. We need a replacement for Tyron Smith. We need running backs. And we may need another wide receiver. You don't usually, well, maybe the Cowboys do, look and say that sixth round uh, compensatory pick is going to be one of my starters. And if you are, then that's the problem that you have. If you go into a draft and you can get one impact player and two starters out of it, you're ahead of the curve. Seriously, you are ahead of the curve. And with us, we don't have a fourth round because we traded that with San Francisco to bring in Trey Lance. And the two fists that we had, they're gone because we use those for Stefan Gilmore and for Brandon Cooks. So you've got one, two, three, no fourth. You'll probably get a fifth, and you'll have two sixes and I think a seventh maybe. So we don't have a lot of draft capital to be able to get where we want to be. And you are losing 16 players. Whether you replace them with them or somebody else, you have to go ahead and do that. Ultimately, what the Cowboys need to do is, as they lose one of these journeyman players, if you're going to lose them, you need to replace them with somebody who's as good, but preferably better. The big question will be, drafting as late as we are, middle of the 20s, what kind of player can we get that will be an impact player? Do we bring back Tyron Smith? Do you end up drafting his replacement? There should be some good left tackles, not the top ones. you got to figure that three probably will be gone before the Cowboys get there. But you may look at it and say, we're going to take care of the Lions going forward. Here's where my theory is. You get the biggest bang for your buck when you draft in the line. Here's why. If you're drafting wide receiver, it's great. You got a wide receiver. That's good. Everybody looks for wide receivers, okay? You know the best wide receivers. By the time you get to 20, there's probably going to be four gone. Wide receiver only helps you if you have a good quarterback who can pass to him. If you get a good offensive lineman, that's a stud, a Tyler Smith, he helps in your passing game and in your running game. He makes the running back better because he's opening up holes. He makes the quarterback better because the quarterback's upright. A wide receiver only helps you when you're throwing the football. Same can be said about a great cornerback, okay? We had a good secondary we had a very good secondary, but we didn't have the linebackers. We had a decent defensive line, but you didn't have the linebackers. If you don't have linebackers, you can't stop the run. Just can't. You need the linebackers. But that being said, if you have an immovable force or a beast in the middle, he helps every single level. 
If you have a guy, like I was saying about Micah Parsons, who's getting double and triple team, if you put in there another guy that requires double teams or who's going to blow up the play with a Micah Parsons, all of a sudden you can't double team both of them. Or if you do, then that means there's some other guys on that defensive line that are free. A lot of times, I want you to go back. Go back and look. Go back and look at every uh, Nick Bosa sack with San Francisco. You know how many times you see him having a free run to the quarterback? It wasn't that he ran through the tackle every single time, that he made an incredible spin move. It's because he's got a Chase Young, an Armstead, you know, a Hargrave there that you can't necessarily cover everybody. Somebody's going to be free. It's not to say that Nick Bosa isn't great because he is. But if you only have one guy that's great, then you can game plan against that guy. And this is where you need somebody else. And if you get an incredible, immovable force in the middle, if you get a guy who's like a Vita Vey, then that linebacker's job is that much easier. Then Micah Parsons to Marcus Lawrence, their job is that much easier. And it's sharing the load. So this is where the Cowboys need to understand we're going to spend our resources in building from the lines out and having those linebackers. If you have a great offensive line, you don't have to have a great running back. If you have a great running back and you got a shitty line, he'll make some plays like Barry Sanders did, but he's one in a million. But he's not going to be as effective as an average running back with a great line. And that's the mentality that we have to get into. It's not sexy. It doesn't sell jerseys. But this is where you must be able to win. You just do. And you can look at the teams that made it further than us. They're definitely better and stronger in the lines. So as we roll out of here, I want to go back to this because this is a couple days ago with Swagoo. His deal with how you fix the Cowboys. And it all starts with restructuring Dak Prescott. Let's listen in. And I kind of, I mean, I, I have to agree with most of the things that he says. The head coaching job in Washington. Quinn was the Cowboys defensive coordinator for the last three seasons. And during that time, the Cowboys defense led the NFL in takeaways and held their opponents to fewer than 20 points per game. Marcus, does the Cowboys defense take a step back with Quinn do- gone? To Dan's point, I, I believe you you believe that that is the case. But whoever this new defensive coordinator is, he needs to understand where his talent is. And I think it needs to be a pressure football team. Every ad- opportunity that they get. We talked about this defense and how they would use personnel and put little guys on the field to create hell on third downs for offenses. That pass needs defense. to be a big mark for this defense. And with a healthy Trayvon and a Stephon Gilmore potentially being able to come back, you got two guys that can play man-to-man on the outside. This needs to be a defense that wants to dictate like Dan Quinn wanted to as opposed to sitting back and waiting. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the Cowboys, Micah Parsons addressed some of the offseason needs for Dallas on his podcast this week. Take a listen. Uh-oh. You know, they're talking about we're going all in this year, man. That's what I would hope for. You know, I'm 24 years old. I've been in this league, you know, three years, and i kind of seen it all. And uh, I hope that we go all in. I hope that we go out and get the players that we're missing because we didn't do that this year. You know, I hope that we challenge ourselves to become better and become greater for us. We hear you, Micah, right? Before they can make any of those moves, though, the Cowboys might have to address Ooh. Dak Prescott's contract situation. Look at that in green right there, okay? Prescott is entering the final year of his contract, which carries a $59.5 million cap hit. That's One second highest eight, in the eight, NFL. Like the others. <laughs> I know, look at that. Uh, and then, you know, you compare talent level and all that. But Parsons says they need the right guys. So Dak's contract looming over all these decisions. Marcus, where should the focus be on the personnel front in Dallas? Building a spine. For this defense in the center. I like oh. Odigazua. I like him as a, a three technique. They need a physical presence on the interior of this defensive line that can change games. And we talked about the guys, Christian Wilkins, DJ Reader, Matabike is up, Chris Jones is potentially there, Leonard Williams. But to me, this is a DJ Reader or a Christian Wilkins type position that Dallas needs. I love the physicality of Odigazua and his rush ability. And then a linebacker. Devin White in Tampa right now mm-hmm. seems to have fallen out of favor with that franchise or whatever is going on there. The one thing I know about him, he's a hell of a football player. And sometimes 
change of scenery is all that's needed. So when you look at this defense and as much as we can blame Dan Quinn for what we saw against Green Bay and blame him for these run games that we saw Dallas get taken advantage of, it's hard as hell to play the run in the, in the NFL with no linebacker. It really so is. So really regardless is. of how your play call, and when you go to that play call sheet, you better have somebody to execute it. Don't you think for one second Kyle Hamilton, they might make Mike McDonald look a lot better. And or Roquan Smith, right? So I think there's a, there's a lot that needs to be done. So to Micah's point, if you're going all in, these need to be some names that are first on your list and trying to acquire. Is, is Demarcus Lawrence more outside? Like yeah, more of a defensive okay. man. Yep. Um, Devin White, can he play with smaller defensive tackles? 100%. Yeah? Because he's always had like a Vita Vey in front Absolutely. of him. Absolutely. And that's why, D.O., because if, if I'm Dallas, I'm revamping, and that's why I said DJ Reader or Christian Wilkins, Size. those guys in particular. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I feel like Odigizua is a three technique that can give you a lot of pass rush. Okay. He's just not afforded to because when teams start running it on you, you ain't, you ain't going to have a chance to get after the quarterback. I, I think over the next couple of days, week, when this decision gets made of who's going to be the defensive coordinator, we're going to know about Mike McCarthy's ego. Reality wow. is Mike McCarthy yeah. should get rid of his ego in this situation, call Bill Belichick first, call Mike Vrabel second, and then call Week Martindale third. Mm -hmm. it, it, and would that make potential awkwardness? Absolutely. We, we all know that. Could his job be on the line come the first week of the October? Absolutely. It's going to anyway. So if, if we're really about it, Dallas, if Michael Parsons' words saying, I hope we go all in, if we're really about it, call Bill Belichick, make him tell you no. Then call Mike Vrabel and make him tell you no. And then call Wink Martindale, because you're talking about pressure, yep. and make him tell you no. If you yeah, want to fix mean, your defense, like coordinator-wise, one of those three guys. But one well, year left want, on the McCarthy deal, which is If you want to keep your job, start from the back of that list, because if you start from the front of that list, you're going to lose your job anyway, because everybody's <laughs> going to realize that the guy you call first is Bill Belichick and, answer better it, and he says yes, he's going to be like, oh, he better than what we got. But We're if you don't win, you're getting fired anyway. You the know other, what I'm I think the other thing about this is, let's look at the secondary. You know, Marcus mentioned Stephon Gilmore early on in the show. Like, I think you work to keep Stephon Gilmore. Hell yeah. yeah. I think you realize that Stephon Gilmore became mm -hmm. your number one corner. Right. And also, you think about the way that this team is built with Donovan Wilson, Malik Hooker, J. Ron Kirst. Are you going to try to keep that part of your team together, or are you going to move away from what Dan Quinn was doing and get bigger with a Devin White yeah. in the middle, add another backer? Also, too, I don't feel like this team was very talented offensively. I know everybody points to what the roster looked like, but Brandon Cooks was like Brandon Cooks, and you didn't really use Brandon Cooks like Brandon Cooks. And Michael Gallup was no longer Michael Gallup, so you couldn't do that. And we were going to run the ball, but we don't really have a guy that we can run the ball with every play, which I told you last year. Thank that I don't you. even work in the front office or a coach, and I knew Tony Potter wasn't supposed to be the one if that's what you wanted to do with offense. Then what so you do in church, what man, I'm saying free. is – you got to go it's build a, a better team. I don't yeah. care if it's Mike it's McCarthy or Michael Jackson <laughs> yep. that's coaching. You ain't going to be bad. There you go. Woo! All right. Uh, we oh, are going to be talking about the running back that's side so of things. I give you that, Dan. Coming up a little bit later. Find out the so running back that these guys think. I'm only didn't win. All right. There you go. Um, I have to agree 100%. You know, I've got so many fans that, that sit there and tell me that, that are yeah, everybody's beating me down like I'm the GM or I'm the fall guy. I'm the guy to blame and stuff. And they tell us, we had enough to compete, man. We had talent. Yeah, well, you didn't have enough talent to win the Super Bowl. And if you didn't win the Super Bowl, if we've been 12 and 5, been this close every single year, then logic tells you you need to get a little bit more. It's not rocket science. It's not like this is a new concept. We've seen teams do this over and over again. You can't say that San Francisco has not been going all in every single year. They go out. They get a Hargrave. They go out. They get a Chase Young. They go out. They get a Christian McCaffrey. They go out. They get a Randy Gregory. I ask you guys. I ask you guys. What one move have the Cowboys made that is good or equal to any of the moves that you've seen San Francisco make? Just one. I'm, I'm just asking. Just one. They went out. They got Trent Williams years ago. They're constantly amassing and amassing more and more talent and have yet to win the Super Bowl. They may win it next weekend, but they've been building this team with legitimate players. The Rams did the same thing. Jalen Ramsey, Odell Beckham, Von Miller, Namakin Sue, 
they go out there. They get some hired assassins to come in to get them over the hump. Tampa Bay did the same thing. The Eagles, well, they missed it by this much. But that is the case. You're not seeing teams. You're not seeing teams that aren't constantly evolving and bringing in more talent that are there every single year, with the exception of having Pat Mahomes as well as Andy Reid. It's more the exception than the rule. You're not seeing teams that aren't bringing in more talent, making it. It's just the case, guys. It's the case. And the Cowboys, you cannot say that's what the Cowboys do, and they haven't been. All right, good people. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And uh, we'll be talking to you all later. Hopefully I can get up with my man, Game Time Brian, because I got some stuff I want to discuss with him. And as always, I appreciate y'all. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you.